Professor Rajamohan, this time, I mean, your column is on uh, Biden, uh, Joe Biden's announced exit from uh, Afghanistan and the sort of evolutions in the great game that will follow as a result. The great game. How salient is it? How, is geography going to become China and Afga- China and Russia in that sense? You mentioned it in your piece. Can you elaborate on that? And to what extent is the is the, are those borders going to matter more and more with the U.S. going on? How will that dynamic change in the neighborhood? Yeah. Now the the if you see, go back to the Soviet intervention in Afghanistan. And, uh, at the time, the Soviet the the three Central Asian republics that now border Afghanistan were part of the Soviet Union. So the Soviet Union could easily move in uh, to salvage what was a friendly uh, regime to the Soviet Union uh, in 1979. Uh, but when the Americans came, I mean, they were coming from 10,000 miles apart, uh, mobilize a big force, uh, put it in, and that could not have been sustained uh, without Pakistani support. So you couldn't have operated without Pakistani support. And then that, that of course, in turn gave Pakistan enormous leverage over what the Americans could do. Some Americans feel look, it is dependent on Pakistan. They have a small border in the Bakan corridor. But I think the CPEC, which they work through Pakistan, their economic cloud that they bring today, the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, their partnership with uh, the Russians. So I think it gives them, and they've recently signed a big $400 billion agreement with Iran. So Chinese are well placed, but the problem is they don't have much experience of dealing with the messy, uh, you know, complexities of uh, of this uh, this part of the world. So, but but nevertheless, I, I'm sure they learn. So China is going to be Russia going to be a factor. I think Iran because the the religious nature of the time to persecute the non-Sunni minorities, uh, Iran will have to act. Uh, so, while India does not have a border, so India will always be limited, but it'll have to work with other partners. So, geography is going to be quite central uh, in, in what's going to happen uh, after the Americans have gone. Yes, sir, you mentioned this in the column in the, up in the IndianExpress.com, as you're watching this video, as well as in the link uh, in the description for this video. The link, in the description, the link should be up. But, you know, one of the things that that you mentioned in the column is, like you said now, that Pakistan's centrality and a lot of leverage it had over the West emanates from its role in the earlier Afghan conflict as as the ISI as being part of America's strategy. The fear has been how legitimate do you think is that Pakistan will regain that kind of, you know, that relationship vis-a-vis the US or Western powers or whoever's in the game, whoever wants to be a player in Afghanistan now, especially with the Taliban will have to go through Pakistan and that sort of gives it huge strategic leverage. No, I, I think uh, given geography, Pakistan is always going to be important. I mean, they have this open border, uh, 2,000 kilometers touring line. So geography and a, and, a, and a border that ran through the Pashtun heartlands, uh, which the British divided. Uh, so therefore, it is inevitable that Pakistan would have a big role. Uh, but it's also a paradox. Just as, an op- just as the border and proximity give Pakistan a special role, Pakistan is also probably the most vulnerable to the internal developments in Afghanistan. That is, if there is Taliban, and Taliban ties up with other Islamic forces, difficulties with the Terry K. Labak protests on the blasphemy issue. So therefore, if the Islamist politics of uh, Afghanistan and the Taliban intersect, combined with the various Islamic groups in Pakistan, so Pakistan is going to have a deep difficulty. Until now, Pakistan has been able to instrumentalize Islam for its political purposes. Uh, there is a danger uh, that the groups acquire a life of their own, and, and they could uh, they could also complicate life for Pakistan. And more importantly, uh, Taliban, which was really, you know, survived because of Pakistan's support. I never recognize the Durand line. Yeah. So they're also nationalists in that sense. So, so you have deep structural problems. Uh, and and uh, Pakistan's paradox, as I said, greatest influence, but also the most vulnerable to internal changes in, uh, in, in Afghanistan. The final question, taking off from this one. So now, like you said, 
India does not have direct act. We don't share a border with Afghanistan. Yet we have been a pretty important player in the region. And there is, at least among large sections, reportedly, by every, going by every report, everyone was a huge amount of goodwill for India even now in Kabul, in Afghanistan, for a lot of this thing. Is there a danger now, the other fear sort of whispered is that we're going to be left out of the table in this entire process now as Afghanistan, especially because we were seen by the Taliban at a certain point as being antithetical to its interests. How should Delhi move? I think we are, we are the mirror image of Pakistan. You don't have access. That's why you are liked because you don't muck in their domestic stuff the way Pakistan does. So, so you have a lot of goodwill because you're once removed. Uh, that also gives you some limitations. But in the past, we overcame that through coalition building, uh, through other actors. For example, when Taliban was governing you know, Afghanistan, we worked with Russians and the Iranians. Uh, this time, the combinations could be different. So I think India will have a role, but it is not the direct physical role of the kind uh, we know in the past. It can contribute to development. You could imagine India engaging the Taliban at some point of time. Uh, you could imagine you know, India working with others. So all kinds of possibilities exist. So, so I don't think India should be anxious. Oh, we were not invited for this meeting. We were not invited for that meeting. But the fact is, structurally, there's always been a contradiction between Kabul and Rawalpindi uh, because of the Duran line, because of the other issues. And whoever sits in Kabul or is fighting Kabul, at least some of them would want to have good relations with India. So you come into the picture, but we need to get in right now kind of a thing. Uh, there used to be great policy in India. It was called masterly inactivity, uh, which meant that uh, you wait for the contradictions to unfold rather than you rushing in and somehow you want to control the situation. We're never going to be a controlling agent, but we can be one that can shape the outcomes uh, through... Uh, uh, active engagement through uh, policies of coalition building and of one way you're prepared to think out of the box today. Uh, for example, the question, at what point should you engage the Taliban? Uh, comes in, it's a question that's being asked. So I think it opens up all kinds of possibilities for India. All you need is to wait, be clear-headed and be tough in terms of uh, making choices when they have to be made. Great, sir. Thanks a lot. Uh... Everyone, please read the piece. It will give us a lot more depth in there of the things we've talked about. And we'll see you next week. Thanks so much.